Welcome to the presentation of my paper for the conference titled Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs Redefined How the Sixth Level Self-Transcendence Can Enrich Organizational Culture, Managerial and Leadership Style Abraham Maslow, the founder of humanistic psychology developed the classic five-level hierarchy of need pyramid explaining human motivation widely used uh, in schools all over the world and implemented in organizations over the years it is especially his identification of higher order needs such as self-actualization and self-esteem as motivators of human behavior that have played a major role over the years in the training and development of managers, supervisors, executives, and leadership in organizations in general, giving him the title of father of modern management and leadership. Based on Maslow's theory, the multitude of organizational programs on personal development and motivation focus on the desire of individuals to actualize and fulfill their potential and in the end became a very narrow and intense focus and path towards personal success. Before Maslow died, however, he identified a sixth and the highest level of need self-transcendence, which goes beyond the individual and esteem needs. At the sixth level, people view the world and their purpose in it on a more global scale. He never had a chance to publish on it widely and it has now come to light through the work of researchers such as Colco Rivera. This presentation examines the enriching implications of Maslow's previously neglected level of self-transcendence and what effect it can have on organizational culture, management style and leadership development. Traditionally, it was believed that Maslow's hierarchy of needs only entail a five-level hierarchical pyramid to explain a person's motives for development. The well-known pyramid, of course, has its five levels, starting at the physiological needs, where a person seeks basic necessities of life, such as survival needs, going to safety needs, where we need security, a system, law and order, going to the need of belongingness, or love needs where we seek affiliation with a group and then he came to the to esteem needs level four and five the esteem needs is where a person seek esteem through recognition of achievements and then self-actualization where the individuals seek fulfillment of personal potential and this was considered the highest motivator uh, of human needs especially uh, as defined by organizations however in recent years, as I pointed out, researchers has discovered that Maslow extensively in his personal writings and his journals wrote about his sixth level of need, which he considered the highest level. And that is called self-transcendence, where individuals seek to further a cause beyond the self and to go beyond the boundaries of self. Self-transcendent leaders, if we take it from the work of Maslow, are characterized by a common purpose, a global perspective, and a joint responsibility for the fate and the existence of the whole organization in the society where they exist. They identify with something greater than the individual self or the organization exclusively engaging in a selfless service to others. Maslow specifically used the term transcendence to differentiate this kind of person from the dichotomization of self and the environment, stating that it was a person freed from a dichotomous way of thinking. And by dichotomous way of thinking, he was referring to people that is affected or influenced by the culture around them and the environment around them. According to Maslow, a healthy personality, while including success, 
uh, inappropriate coping behavior involving mastery, effectance, and competence, level four and five, that person is also, or come to a point where that person is freed from the influence of the environment, specifically from the way that environment affects their personal development. One of the main forces inhibiting personal growth to go from a focus on the self only to self transcendence is the effect of culture. And in this sense, we are looking at organizational culture and the effect that it can have on individuals. Organizational culture is defined as a system of shared meaning held by members that distinguishes that organization from others. In organizations, we find the dominant culture that expresses the core values shared by a majority of organizational members. If we look at organizations the world over at this point in time, there are certain characteristics that stand out. The dominant characteristics of uh, or the dominant culture in most organizations in the world currently is one that is narrowly, narrowly defined only on themselves and their own actualization. And we see a focus only on profit, minimal cost, return for shareholders, market share, expansion, and a focus on top performers of employees to attain the above. This has led to scandalous behavior in organizations that we see the world over. In the last week, we have seen that the upper echelon of leadership of Barclays Bank International had to resign after they reached a $453 settlement with the US and UK regulators who investigated them for manipulation of an important benchmark interest rate. The CEO, the CFO and several other people had to resign. In a recent media, uh, meeting of pharmaceutical companies marketing a drug for asthma, the person leading the event, and the event resembled a rock star concert, shouted, I can see people becoming millionaires selling this stuff. Another pharmaceutical company in the last week or two has been fined $3 billion in the USA for pushing medication exclusively developed for adults, but marketed among the users to prescribe among children. We have seen the BP oil scandal and the oil spill in 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico, which became the largest oil spill in the petroleum industry. The cost that is not yet fully determined. During that time, the CEO, who has since had to resign of BP, stated that he would like to have my life back and get this behind him. And in the week or two after he said that, he entered his yacht into a race, uh, an international race, and also attended the meeting. I've seen the Enron scandal, a company that in 2000 had revenue of $101 billion that came to a fall while the company was solely bankrupt, changed their, their style of, of managing and keeping their books to keep on showing a profit while they were wholly bankrupt. At the same time, encouraging their own employees to reinvest their retirement into the company. Many of those leaders are now in prison. We have seen the Bernie Madoff scandal uh, where $65 billion was lost and where the company was nothing else than a Ponzi scheme while they even encouraged non-profits that help disabled children to invest their money with them. And the list goes on and on of companies that is part of this dominant culture of performance at all cost and profit at all cost for the organization. It has, become, it has become a dominant culture, focusing exclusively on the bottom line of the organization and the materialistic reward of its employees developed from the society in which they operate. What is needed? If we look at this six level self-transcendence of Maslow, how can it affect organizations? What is needed is a redefining of the culture of organizations. 
as long as like-minded people are hired and indoctrinated into a dominant culture uh, that is focused narcissistically and selfishly on their own performance and only on the bottom line, regardless of the cost to society and, and the world around them, nothing will change. But we need leaders that can change and redefine the culture of the organization. It is time for a change in culture through a change in managerial, managerial and leadership style. It's time to emphasize Maslow's sixth level of human motivation, self-transcendence. What does this mean? It will mean a focus on the role of the company in the environment, the world, the area they do business in, on the people and the society around them, and the impact the organization has on these people, not only on the profit margin. What is it will mean a need to go beyond the striving for profit only, to emphasize social responsibility as equally important as declaring a profit for the shareholders. It will, will entail a need to redefine leadership as not only uh, focus on the actualization of self and of my own needs and of my own personal potential, but going beyond my own needs to serving the needs of others. It will entail a new focus on ethical responsibility and ethical leadership. It will mean going beyond the bottom line, beyond going, growth, going beyond only growth only, beyond profit, beyond expansion. It will mean a change from what did we earn to saying how did we earn it. To take responsibility for how we as an organization earn our money. It will bring a focus on a common purpose, a global perspective, and a joint responsibility for the fate of the organization and the society in which it's, it's, it's operating. Managers, leaders, and executives emulating Maslow's level of self-transcendence will break with organizational culture and tradition, selfishly and narcissistically focusing only on the materialistic reward and on earnings and will take responsibility for the company's role in society. They will see the organization as a global community or part of the global community with a, com a common purpose. Not merely, not merely selling to society as consumers, but serving customers to improve the world as a whole. They will elevate themselves beyond differences and rigid conceptualizations of what the organization should be and realize that optimal performance cannot only be reached by functioning in, in, in isolation any longer or merely focusing on my own performance and how much we have earned, but focusing on the role the organization can play in bettering the world. Thank you.